Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us here for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting today's show once again. Up first here, a widespread area of rain, or rain fell across a large area of interior Alaska, including the Panhandle today. Um, no individual amount is really anything uh, of uh, is too significant, but uh, definitely wetting rains. In the case of Kivalina, these are 24 hour amounts. They pick up uh, three quarters of an inch of rain. And then down uh, west southwest, just west southwest of McGrath, a uh, little over half an inch fell at flat. And then off to the east there in Tana Valley, east of Fairbanks, also an Air Force base picked up a third of an inch of precipitation. And then down in Juneau, they had 46 hundredths of an inch. And uh, this all can translate into low fire danger uh, across just about all of Alaska. Higher fire danger up there in the North Slope, but that area is a real stretch into the high zone there. So you could more uh, look at that as the area of the state with the highest fire danger, and that's up on the North Slope now, it's been drier. They're the exception of receiving precipitation up there, as well as the uh, extreme northeast interior as well. But everywhere else with a widespread area of uh, rain, which has been, again, wetting or soaking of nature, or the nature of has been wetting or soaking, other areas picking up less, and of course, mostly to the north there, north of the Brooks Range, nothing at all, and low fire danger across all the state. And from there, webcam shot here of uh, Makoriuk on Nunavak Island, clear skies. Mm -hmm. Good VFR flying there, which usually uh, considered to be mostly socked in with low clouds and fog this time of the year. Not the case today. Widespread clearing occurred across, uh, well, from the Bering Sea into the Yukon Delta coast down toward Kuskokwim Bay with uh, Makoriuk right in the middle of it. And the next shot here, farther to the north, Savunga, same thing. Good sunshine, VFR flying, and mostly clear skies. This shot uh, looking south toward the higher terrain of St. Lawrence Island and some Q building due to the heating of the uh, sunshine, such as it is, but enough to at least kick off some uh, minimal convective cloud type clouds. And from there, farther to the north or into the Bering Strait, you know, another location that's uh, considered to be mostly IFR. Uh, flying conditions socked into low clouds and fog. Not the case today. Sunshine there, some mid and high level clouds around, but winds really not much of a problem. And uh, pretty dry, as you can see from the uh, terrain there, uh, that uh, is just now looks like it's starting to turn green, the uh, tundra grass. So from there, moving on to satellite imagery, you can see a uh, system slowly been that was stationed over the Russian Far East late last week into the weekend, slowly drifting eastward. And that pushed the uh, rainfall into the western interior, the heaviest amounts again, up along the northwest coast and down across uh, the Seward Peninsula. But uh, beginning to clear out here over south central Alaska, Kodiak Island, off uh, northwest winds resulted in mostly sunny afternoon, as well as the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound. And then just uh, high clouds there along the southwest coast. Hard to pick up the clearing there on the IR shot here. And then the next system bringing gale force winds and rain into the far western Aleutians with the Cirrus Shield just reaching ADAC late this afternoon. Otherwise, there were some partly sunny skies over the Copper River Basin and the southeast coast. Uh, basically dry, well, there was some uh, diminishing showers uh, system currently moving through, about ready to exit the area. And so what rainfall occurred today will eventually be tapering off later tonight. And for the on the chart today, uh, you can see a trough up along the Brooks Range there and isolated thunderstorms, at least by early afternoon, were detected uh, central Brooks Range eastward there uh, toward the border with not much of anything reported south of there. Probably be more here before the day's out. Low clouds and fog along areas of the Arctic coast, some breaks over the North Slope and light rain, fog and drizzle persisting, kind of shifting northward 
there from the Seward Peninsula and Bering Strait into the uh, western Brooks Range, the Long Mountains back toward Kotzebue into the Kobuk Valley. Areas of rain and showers extending southward, again across the, well, from the Noatak Valley, southern slopes of the Brooks Range, into the northern Cuscombe Valley on down and over to about the Alaska Range, and that tapers off to some isolated showers over the Auckland Mountains and toward uh, the Aleutian Range, Iliamna area, and then pretty dry day for the Alaska Peninsula, low clouds and fog over the Bering Sea in areas, and basically dry though from the Fox Islands, Pribilofs, or it was dry from the Fox Islands and Pribilofs, Alaska Peninsula, all the way out to about Kiska, and then just west of Kiska, the outer edge of that next weather system with the gale force winds and rain pushing into the Shimmy and Attu area. And then a couple of troughs now really actually leaving the southeast coast. So showers are tapering off there. They have tapered off. Just an isolated shower may have developed over the eastern Alaska range, but partly sunny skies. Uh, Copper River Basin, and as I mentioned, there were that westerly, west-northwest breeze. Kodiak Island became mostly sunny this afternoon, as did Kenai Peninsula and North Gulf Coast. And the forecast for tonight could be so, uh, still some showers over the Talkeetnas, but Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Kodiak will remain dry as well as Prince William Sound, still a chance of rain there, say for the uh, Denali Highway area up into the central Alaska range with showers extending northeastward, say across the White Mountains to about Eagle, and then higher pressure, weak high pressure ridging into the west there, clearing the skies out with no precipitation anticipated. Southwest flow coming up the west side of that ridge in a weak trough may will definitely increase the clouds, so the clearing you had today forecast to uh, be gone sometime tonight, probably this evening, for uh, Nunavak Island as well as St. Lawrence Island into the Bering Strait. IFR back in the forecast there with low clouds, fog, and maybe even some drizzle and light rain. Bigger storm out to the west, spreading an area of gale force winds and rain eastward with the uh, rain reaching ADAC at least by late tonight, but staying west of Atka. It remains dry over the Fox Islands and Alaska Peninsula areas. and. Call it mostly cloudy, but dry for the southeast coast with shower activity kicking well off to the east and southeast. For Tuesday, weak high pressure, uh, say northern Cuscombe Valley, give or take there, the center of which, and then on the north side of that high, a uh, trough with some areas of rain and showers there from the eastern Arctic coast across the Brooks Range on back into and linking up with that weak low center there for the northern Seward Peninsula and into St. Lawrence Island. So a cloudy, damp day coming up for you on Tuesday from for the northern Bering Sea, wind and rain, although probably losing the gale force winds as the front gradually weakens for the central Aleutians, possibly. Still could be a narrow band in advance of the front and uh, wet, unsettled conditions extend back to Chimianat too, but uh, basically dry with low clouds and fog, pretty widespread over the Alaska Peninsula and even the eastern and southeast Bering Sea into Bristol Bay. Isolated thunderstorms possible eastern Alaska range and the eastern Copper River Basin, partly sunny, southern Panhandle, and then look for a big improvement. The storm system out west now pushes mostly north uh, in toward the Russian Far East, but far enough to the east to bring wind, rain, low clouds, fog, light rain and drizzle, and again, IFR flying conditions from the Pribilofs or the Aleutians actually across the entire Bering Sea up to St. Lawrence Island into the Bering Strait with low clouds and fog all the way up around the Arctic coast. May see a few showers on the east side, but nothing significant, mostly sunny over the interior of the state. Uh, and just some isolated showers developing, really no thunderstorms. And they shouldn't develop into uh, any thunderstorms over the Alaska Range and the eastern interior. So looking at partly mostly sunny skies there. And again, warmer south central Alaska. Some areas back into the lower 70s, the Sitna Valley, into the Kenai Peninsula, Copper River Basin. Sunshine down to the North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island, sunshine again. And the northern panel will be mostly sunny. Call it partly sunny over the central and southern southeast coast, but dry and the thunderstorms I have on there will be isolated and probably near or east of the border. Moving on to forecast lows Tuesday morning, tomorrow morning, uh, basically uh, in the 40s over much of the state, some 30s showing up as usual along the Arctic coast and areas of the North Slope, even down toward uh, Ambler, looking at a low of 39, otherwise 40s everywhere else. And for the highs tomorrow, 60s, and that's about it for the uh, interior, lower to mid. Could see upper 60s around the Susitna Valley, say from B 
Big Lake, Willow, up to Talkeetna. And in the 60s for the Kenai Peninsula, lower 60s Kodiak Island, 40s out over the Bering Sea, highs in the 50s to lower 60s for the southeast coast, and near 40 along the Arctic coast, uh, 50s over the North Slope. That'll be followed by lows Wednesday morning in the 30s once again along the Arctic coast, 35 to 42 for the North Slope, and south of the Brooks Range, lows in the 40s, with some 30s in the higher elevations, otherwise 40s all the way down to the North Gulf Coast, and the panhandle looking at, uh, again, pretty typical lows for this time of year in the upper 40s, the lower 50s, as well as the Bering Sea. That'll be followed by highs once again, warmer, especially South Central Alaska, Copper River Basin, uh, highs 65 to 75, but staying in the 60s up over the interior, central and east side there, uh, Tanana Valley, Fairbanks, look for a high of 65, and well into the 60s, maybe a 70 showing up over the panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather for Tuesday morning, IFR along the Arctic coast and North Slope, and some of that slipping south of the Brooks Range looks like into the northwestern Koyukuk, or northeastern Koyukuk Valley, and maybe the north, uh, or into the Koyukuk, possibly. Otherwise, VFR south of there along uh, central and upper Yukon River there, as well as the Kuskokwim Valley, and solid IFR out over the Bering Sea, through the Bering Strait, most of uh, the Seward Peninsula, and to the northwest coast, as well as eastward into Bristol Bay, and on east of there to Iliamna, to the southern Alaska Range, southern Kodiak Island, IFR, Fognac Island, VFR, up through Cook Inlet, and IFR from the southern Copper River Basin, Talkeetna Mountains, across Prince William Sound, Gulf of Alaska, right up to the coast of the Panhandle with good marginal VFR over the inside waters to the border. For the afternoon, you can see uh, quite a bit of VFR over the interior with a uh, lingering area of marginal VFR <clears throat> from the western Koyukuk Valley, westward across the Kobuk Valley to the northwest coast, and still no change over the Bering Sea and Aleutian, solid VFR, marginal for the Alaska Peninsula, and IFR retreating back off the coast for Bristol Bay, but still an area of marginal VFR, a fairways inland across the yukon Kuskokwim Delta, VFR Kodiak Island, and South Central Alaska, as well as Prince William Sound, run into the marginal there over the Eastern Copper River Basin with IFR from Cape Yakutega right on down the southeast coast, remaining marginal over the inside waters. For Wednesday morning, IFR and marginal VFR across the southeast coast, uh, better to the north toward the passes. And for Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, Northern Cook Inlet, VFR right on up to the Arctic coast, uh, where you'll start the day there with VFR flying conditions and then marginal VFR over the western interior, IFR along the Arctic coast, and some improvement over the Bering Sea now, a uh, big zone of marginal VFR across Adak and Atka northward into the Bering, otherwise surrounded by IFR. But that returns uh, Wednesday afternoon to solid IFR conditions out over the Bering Sea right up across St. Lawrence Island to the Strait and Southern Seward Peninsula. And for the Alaska Peninsula, IFR south side, VFR north side, southern Bristol Bay, with mostly VFR conditions over the interior and just some isolated to really widely scattered marginal VFR zones, not many at all, a little more widespread on the central and eastern Brooks Range, southern Panhandle, uh, marginal with uh, northern two-thirds or so of the southeast coast in the VFR zone. Passes, Anatuvik, IFR becoming VFR, same forecast for Adigan, IFR flying conditions becoming VFR, Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR for tomorrow, as well as rainy, VFR, windy, wide open, VFR flying, either approach and Isabel, same forecast, VFR, Mintasta, VFR, Tanita, VFR, and Portage, starting out IFR, uh, kind of if, if there's low clouds and fog, Otherwise, it'll be VFR the entire day. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR switches over to VFR. And for the freezing levels, cold pool about 4,000 feet in across uh, South Central Alaska there. That puts the snowfall level down to about roughly the top of, say, Flat Top Mountain. Otherwise, warmer there across the Panhandle up to 8,000 feet south and much warmer out over the uh, Lucians and the Southern Bering Sea. Freezing levels there are ending 10 to 12,000 feet. 
and uh, that due to subtly flow of that incoming system, but it's weakening and the amount of moisture across the Aleutians really not that significant. So there's a thread of some icing there. We'll see if the light rime variety, the heavier moisture stays west and shifts northward there into the Russian Far East, but the band does come across St. Lawrence Island with the potential for icing as that does, but nothing significant. Over the interior, areas of mixed icing, freezing level to 10,000 feet. And for the jet stream, you can see uh, ridging coming up across southern Alaska there, linking up with a uh, more northern jet coming across the northwestern bearing, and that kind of puts a squeeze on the atmosphere. And we've got a 120 knot westerly jet there that dives southeastward off the southeast coast. And at 9,000 feet, storming us over the western Aleutians, 45 to 50 knot winds across the central Aleutian, central Bering Sea. Same pattern at 3,000 feet, southerly is 45 to 50 knots across the Aleutians into the Bering. That translates to widespread moderate chop at the island westward to Shimia at 2. And for St. Lawrence Island, gradually increasing turbulence of isolated moderate for St. Lawrence Island. What we're looking at is a legacy of the Ice Age. Permafrost and methane is a time machine. So what we're going to do is walk back in time. We're going to see old carbon, old bones, old environments, and none of those are in equilibrium with today's climate, so that's the problem. That world doesn't exist anymore, and it hasn't for 10,000 years. It was nicely and very delicately separated from this modern, warmer climate by about this much moss. And when that moss goes away, whether for fire, or for human disturbance, or for warming, then all hell breaks loose. Permafrost. It's maybe the part of the cryosphere that's most out of sight, and mind. It's fascinating how it formed in the first place, and how it got loaded with so much carbon. In a minute, we'll go back underground with Matthew Sturm, from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. But first, let's meet Peter Griffith, NASA's project manager for the Above Campaign, which supports more than 70 science projects studying forest and tundra vegetation, wildfires, animals like birds, caribou, and doll sheep, methane emissions from expanding northern lakes, and the impacts of climate change on people in Alaska, Canada, and around the world. Many of those projects have some direct connection to permafrost. Permafrost is the hidden cryosphere. It's the permanently frozen soil that surrounds the Arctic all across Alaska, northern Canada, and then across Eurasia. The ground has been frozen during the ice ages. During the ice ages, there was not enough snowfall in the drier regions of Alaska and Canada to form glaciers there, so the land was suitable for vegetation. What happened is that over thousands and thousands of years, all of that plant material got compacted and frozen every winter and buried and pushed down so that today there's 300 feet deep of frozen water and dead plants and some pieces of dead animals too. Sometimes you find you know, woolly mammoths <laughs> in the permafrost. But most of it, of the organic matter as we call it in the permafrost, is um, frozen plant material. Some of that plant material is now thawing and decaying, releasing its ancient carbon into the atmosphere, sometimes in the form of methane gas bubbling out of expanding northern lakes. We started this fuel campaign uh, because the Arctic is the part of the planet that is warming first and fastest. And there are consequences to this for permafrost. So during the Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment, we're studying permafrost with people on the ground, from aircraft flying over the region, and also from satellites in space. Another way to understand the permafrost is to take a walk below ground with Matthew Sturm and into the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permafrost tunnel. And they've dug this 
this tunnel back into the side of a hill about 200 feet and it goes sort of sloping down so that by the end of the tunnel you're about 100 feet underground and you're surrounded by bones sticking out of the wall from the steppe bison and the mastodons that are frozen in it. There's sticks that are 40,000 years old, you know, that you can touch with your hand. There's grass that's still green that's tens of thousands of years old because it got frozen, you know, right away and it's never lost the, the, the green color. But as fascinating as it is to see these relics of an ancient era, or to see a tree split in half by thawing soil, or even to light a ball of methane on fire from under winter ice, at the end of the day, Peter and his colleagues want to know just how much organic matter is frozen in that permafrost, and how fast it might be released. Currently, we, we think that there is something on the order of two to three times as much carbon locked up as frozen organic matter in permafrost as there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So releasing all of that organic carbon from permafrost into the atmosphere would be a real game changer. That would be a tremendous transformation of the planet's atmosphere. Now, the good news is that it would take a very, very long time for that to happen. However, we are warming the planet uh, at a rate now that calls into question how quickly is that uh, changing and what the consequences uh, in the near future and in the far future are going to be. You're in the middle of a field somewhere in California at four in the morning. It's sort of surreal in a way because you've put so much time into it for so long and, and actually seeing it over there is like <laughs> Whoa, you know, it's, uh, it's a big deal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back on the today's sea ice analysis there. Again, not a lot of change from what was uh, observed yesterday in the analysis. Uh, Good open water right up through the Bering Strait up uh, along the northwest coast there to about the uh, latitude of, say, Point Late or Wainwright or so, and then immediately to the north and northwest and northeast, uh, much heavier ice conditions. And no big changes anticipated for the next uh, five days in the sea ice uh, pattern. And for the southeast coast, just looking at small craft advisory, northwest winds at 25 knots with 8-foot seas along the coast of Prince Wales Island. Central coast, uh, west-northwest, 15 to 20 knots and 15 knots out of the west on the north coast. Small craft advisory is Lynn Canal. South winds uh, coming up 25 knots in the afternoon with sea building to 5 feet. Otherwise, the central southern inside waters looking at winds to be mostly northwest at 15 knots. Outlook for Wednesday, Lynn Canal, north winds 15 knots, and northwest at 10, so pretty light winds for the inside waters. Still looking at small craft advisories along the coast of Prince Oils Island for northwest winds at 25 knots, and north to northwest on the central coast at 15 to 20, and then northwest 15 on the extreme north coast. Cook Inlet, light west breeze tomorrow, 10 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet, but small craft advisories, uh, Kamishak Bay, as well as the Barren Islands, west winds sustained at 25 knots with 7 foot seas, and that'll fall back to about 20 knots for the western North Gulf Coast, and even lower there toward Middleton Island on the east side, east or west at 10. Same forecast for Prince William Sound, light west winds at 10 knots. And for Wednesday, northwest at 10 for the Sound there with 2 foot seas. Eastern North Gulf Coast, west 15, and the west side, 20 knot westerlies there, including the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, west winds of 15, Cook Inlet, uh, basically south or southwest to west, with the westerlies mostly north of the Forelands, but only at about 10 knots of slight seas. Bristol Bay, southwest at 10 tomorrow, the Alaska Peninsula, southwest 15 knots, 5 foot seas, turning west at 15, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, southwest 20 for Shelikoff Strait, Kodiak Island, west at 20. And that uh, continues. No change for Kodiak Island, Shelikoff Strait for Wednesday with those west southwesterlies at 20 knots. 
Alaska Peninsula, south to southeast, uh, trending upward, especially on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula in the afternoon, about 20 knots, with Bristol Bay looking at light winds from the southwest. And for the Aleutians, uh, starting out west, say Shimia to Kiska, south winds 30 knots. Gale warnings from Kiska Island all the way over to Atka. Minimum gales sustained from the south at 35 knots with 10 to 15 foot seas. And small craft advisories advancing eastward toward Nikolski, otherwise on Alaska Island, looking at south to southwest winds 15 to 20 knots and seas right around 5 feet. Outlook for Wednesday. Fox Islands, uh, south to southeast winds, 20 to 30 knots. Small craft advisories, central Aleutian, southerlies, 25 to 30 knots. And small craft advisories extend westward to Kiska, west of there, southwest at 20. Southwest coast, south to southwest, 15 knots, 4 to 5 foot sea, south 20 knots for the Pribilof, south 25 for small craft advisories, St. Matthew Island, otherwise only southeast at 20 for St. Lawrence Island. And for Wednesday, Small craft advisories everywhere. Tightening gradient is at front presses eastward against the ridge over the interior. So we're looking at sustained southerly winds, 25 to 30 knots. All areas with uh, seas running nine or seven to 13 feet. Norton Sound, though, only looking at 15 knot winds. For the uh, central eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, light winds from the east northeast tomorrow, 10 knots with small craft advisories. For the west coast, down to Cape Thompson, then back to 15 knots, Cape Thompson to Wales. And for Wednesday, southeast 20 knots, Wells to Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, easterlies at 20 knots, western Beaufort Sea or western Arctic coast, whichever, uh, west at 10, light west breeze or no wind or variable. Uh, light winds pretty much sums up the central coast and really about the same for the east side, calling for 10 knot winds though. And for tonight, chance of rain, north slope, Brooks Range. Uh, not so much for the Arctic coast, where low clouds and fog will probably increase. Definitely looking at the uh, cloud ceilings, visibilities diminishing, coming down to IFR conditions. That southwest flow sweeps northward in toward the Bering Strait. And then the storm with gale force winds and rain, they're coming in and a little more prevalent over the southwest Bering and central Aleutians. And for tomorrow, that system advances to the central Aleutians as high pressure begins to uh, take over the central interior, which becomes even sunnier and warmer on Wednesday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.